At about 4.30 p.m. on the 12th of August 2019, on the western tiphead of the Snapper Mineral Sands Mine, a dozer operator requested a water bottle from the crib room. About 15 minutes later, a leading hand worker driving a light vehicle arrived at the tiphead. He contacted the dozer operator by radio and arranged to meet at a light tower located at the tip head. It was common practice at the mine for vehicles to use the lighting towers as park-up areas and meeting points. The operator stopped the dozer, lowered its implements and had a radio conversation with the worker. A short time later, the worker contacted the dozer operator via radio and told him to track back to the light tower. Before reversing, the dozer operator checked the area by looking out all windows as well as the rear view mirror and did not see a light vehicle behind him. Dozer had only reversed about 10 to 15 metres at a speed of about 6 kilometres per hour before colliding with the light vehicle. Immediately after the collision, the dozer operator stopped, moved forward, lowered the implements, shut the machine down and exited the cab. The worker was the only occupant of the light vehicle. An emergency response was activated. The worker suffered fatal injuries. The resources regulator's investigation identified that the worker was operating under the contractor's safety management system and operating procedures. The investigation determined that the primary cause of the incident was that the light vehicle operator failed to comply with procedures when he entered within the 50-metre work area of the dozer while it was operating, positioned the light vehicle directly behind and within 10 to 15 metres of the dozer after instructing the operator to track back towards the light tower shortly before, and failed to establish positive communication before entering the dozer's work area, including not establishing and maintaining line of sight and clear UHF communications. The investigation identified the following factors. The contractor's procedures did not provide a clear set of step-by-step -step instructions for how light vehicles were to safely approach heavy vehicles in operation. The contractor's procedures regarding parking within active mining areas were not fully understood and followed. However, the rule prohibiting parking behind heavy vehicles was. There was a common practice of heavy vehicles and light vehicles parking up at light towers, but that practice was not clearly mandated in the mobile plant management system or any other procedure. The contractor's procedures did not adequately segregate light and heavy vehicles through the mandatory use of designated parking bays and or bunded areas. The work practices of the contractor's light vehicle operators were not adequately monitored or assessed. The practicability of fitting proximity detection and or collision avoidance systems to vehicles had not been assessed and the contractor's dozers were not fitted with equipment to minimise the effect of operator field of vision blind spots. Positive communication procedures were not adequately enforced and lessons from previous mobile plant incidents had not been learned in that proximity detection and collision avoidance systems, side view mirrors and reversing cameras had not been trialled and their effectiveness had not been considered. It is recommended that mine operators and contractors, where reasonably practicable, segregate light and heavy vehicles in active tip heads through the use of designated parking bays and or bunded areas. Consider, and where reasonably practicable, install proximity detection and or collision avoidance systems and visual aids in heavy vehicles, such as reversing cameras, rear and side view mirrors. Ensure operating procedures provide clear instruction about how light vehicles are to safely approach heavy vehicles in operation. Provide workers with training on blind spots and limited visibility on heavy vehicles. Ensure mobile plant positive communication procedures are followed. Ensure the work practices of light vehicle operators are appropriately monitored and assessed. Ensure mobile plant introduction to site processes are followed with appropriate plant-specific risk assessments conducted for heavy vehicles operated on site. And ensure the implementation of recommendations arising from incident investigations are monitored by officers through to finality. Workers required to operate mobile plant must comply with mobile plant separation procedures, 
comply with parking and positive communication procedures, and never enter and or park within the prohibited work zones of operating heavy vehicles. For more information and to see the full report, visit our website.